welcome to our next episode of Family Matters. I'm Chloe Leary, the director of the Winston Prouty Center. And Family Matters is a show that we are sponsoring to talk about topics of interest to families with young children. So we've talked with a couple nurses. Last time we talked with Mary Coogan about early intervention and how to think of supporting your child's development. And today I'm very happy to welcome Susan Heimer, she has been at the Winston Prouty Center and has seen many toddlers coming through her classroom over the years. So I thought it would be a great time for us to sort of move up. Now you have this baby, you've gotten through the fourth trimester, and now you have a little kid. What are you going to do with them? So, Susan, you've seen so many families. Um, how many years have you been at Prouty? I'm starting my 20th year. <laughs> 20th year. So think about how many kids. And actually, you've seen lots of kids graduate from I've high school. I've seen them so. just um, grow and blossom and in the communities, and it's yeah. been such a joy. It's yes. been one of the great things about being in a community yeah. long term. And as a, um, actually, I had my children go through your classroom, right. so I can actually <laughs> attest to how wonderful it was to have you as one of those first people that helps you, you know, your child grow. It's, so. it's, it's such an honor to be a part of a family. Uh, at that point, they're small. Um, they have the circle of parents and grandparents mm -hmm. and then a few others, but not too many people really know them in depth besides a, mm -hmm. a caregiver. Mm -hmm. So an early childhood educator is in a very special position. Absolutely. <laughs> so we're going to talk with you today about uh, more about developments for this next phase and what sort of uh, gets your inside knowledge about toddlers and what are they doing. So let's start there. Let's start with, um, you know, again, you've sort of gotten uh, through uh, those first few months and now you have a little person who is in your world. What are some things that toddlers are doing that are sort of important for families or caregivers to know about? Well, they have been maybe, you know, a sweet compliant baby. Uh, you've been through the pregnancy. You've been through, you know, spending a lot of time getting ready for a baby. But all of a sudden you have this little walking, talking, or at least mobile, child with mm -hmm. very um, strong drives to uh, do things independently. Mm -hmm. And they're learning things at a tremendous rate. It's almost overwhelming at times to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. And um, they um, are always making you be on. They're very busy. <laughs> they're very busy. It's very exhausting for a lot of uh, families Absolutely. just to keep up with them. Absolutely. So what are the, some of the things that they are busy doing at this age? What do you... Well, mobility is a huge part of it. You know, they are learning how to move their bodies in space, um, learning to use their big muscles. Um, a lot of times they're at a run, but they don't know how to stop or turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it, that's, of course, after the, the lightning, you know, uh, crawling stage where they have, you know, challenge you by going downstairs and <laughs> <laughs> doing all kinds of things that are making you uh, change your whole house around. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, they are learning to feed themselves and sometimes they're capable of it. A lot of times they want to do things that they aren't quite capable of. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have this little battle of wills about, you know, who who is going to be able to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all different. They have different energy levels. They have different personalities, very distinctive personalities. Mm -hmm. um, objects are their passion. It's a time for really um, being interested in toys and, and not, not toys, just mm -hmm. how the world works. Mm -hmm. So sort of more external focused maybe than they have been. So Definitely. when they're younger, sort of yes, it's just... the it's the play of attunement between um, you know parent and child a lot of times mm -hmm. for the smaller. Um, infant, and as they um, get to be toddlers, they are exploring the world still with the nurturing and the need, the emotional mm -hmm. closeness of an infant, but with this independent streak and, and just the, you know, finding out how everything around them works. So that must get really frustrating for kids and caregivers it, it and does. families. It's because very frustrating. They still need support but they want to do a little more exploring. What are some things where you notice that happening a lot, where there's sort of that, you said battle of wills, sort of where does that happen often and what are some things to, you do to support that? Well, hopefully it doesn't happen in the grocery store. <laughs> 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 but it often does, mm -hmm. you know, just where there's a lot going on and no way to control it for, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the um, Ways to make a toddler most happy is to have a regular, predictable routine and environment mm -hmm. and have things really set up for them. Mm -hmm. um, that's not always possible. No. 
Right. So kind of being able to predict what uh, their needs will be and have uh, the environment set up for them is really very mm -hmm. critical. Mm -hmm. Remind us what age we're talking about here well, when you think of toddler health. I think of toddlers basically from 15 months on until two and a half. Okay. Somewhere along, mm -hmm. along there. It varies from child to child. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, they are more mobile infants when they're um, on the younger end, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're closer to being preschoolers, you know, on the older mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. But um, that's basically what I consider a toddler. And what, I think one of the questions a lot of parents end up having, especially, uh, well, I think with any number of kids that they have, is how do I know what those milestones are? So, like, walking is one of them, mm -hmm. where um, people are sort of like, is my child walking yet? Are they not? When should they walk? When you think about some of those milestones for toddlers, what are the big ones that pop into your head? Yes, that would be one. And what's um, the time? I mean, that toddler, that would... just the word toddler, you, you know, you get this image of a, a you know, bumbling <laughs> walk. Literally toddling. <laughs> yes, literally toddling. Uh -huh. um, you know, they, they start by cruising around and just sometimes you watch them just getting up and getting down from a standing, you know, sitting position down in the crouch. Uh -huh. They practice some of these things. So you, you kind of know that they're on a trajectory mm -hmm. for doing some of these things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what a parent can do is just to be observing, mm -hmm. you know, and know where they are in, in terms of, you know, where, where they are, you know, in, in everything. I mean, it's, it's such a time, you know, they'll be just learning how to use the wrist motion, um, mm -hmm. starting to feed themselves. There's, there's just so much that they are, are learning. When does that typically start? Because, again, I think it's that... Um, and when I think of myself as a parent, I think it's a lot easier to feed them. <laughs> like, open your mouth, it's eat. Faster. <laughs> it's faster. It's faster. It's easier. Um, but when should parents start thinking about sort of offering the spoon or helping support that, that move, well, that transition? Well, that's a cultural thing, and I think it varies from family to family. I've had some families that really find it um, confusing to have the child doing that kind of independent. Uh -huh. They might have him do uh, self-help skills in different ways, but uh, feeding, they just can't stand, they can't tolerate the mess. Uh -huh. So um, finger foods are very good for that age, you know, oh, because if you give them point. a choice of some things they can do themselves, but maybe not totally coated in spaghetti sauce and yogurt. <laughs> you don't have to start with yogurt for independent eating. Yeah, but What are some of your favorite finger foods to offer kids? Oh, I, I have so many. Um, we discovered the last year that a lot of our kids at the moment like just plain old beans, oh. canned beans. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because they're, you know, just they're, they're pincher grip is, uh -huh. is developed enough that they can do it. They can actually. And, and they like it. Okay. So um, we do what's called a nutritional um, unit, and we explore all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, um, a lot of berries and vegetables and fruits. You know, if they're cut up, I, I say you have to cut things matchstick style mm -hmm. so that, you know, they have um, uh, no choking hazards. Mm -hmm. So but long and skinny versus long and skinny. short things. And the like other thing is that this is a time when they're getting teeth. So there's this huge range of um, ability to chew. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really careful. Some children are ready for, you know, more solid foods at an earlier age than others. Mm -hmm. So, you know. And that's just something uh, you would observe about your own child mm -hmm. and sort of thinking about, right. there's, again, back to that, you just said it's important to observe what they're doing and sort of respond to where they are versus have a set idea about, well, you should be eating solid food now or you right. should be walking by now, but right. really embracing where they are. Right. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that, you know, we were talking about walking, mm -hmm. so that's kind of a big thing to do. Oh, yes. And then you mentioned this Pinterest, like yes. the, the small thing. Those are two really different things that toddlers right. have to, to do. So right. um, what when you think about, again, toddler development and supporting both of those ends of a spectrum almost, what do you think of as important things to consider? Well, somebody said to me, just, just think about yourself um, being in a, in a foreign country, you know, and not really understanding all the language uh -huh. and, and maybe you can only use your left hand and it's got a glove on it. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, and trying to do all the things you want to do. It, it, being a toddler is hard. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's just so much that they're, you know, figuring out in terms of motor and the growing at a, at a rate and just adjusting for different weight and mm -hmm. um, everything. It's, it's huge adjustment mm -hmm. in terms of human development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
What, in terms of thinking about, uh, again, how caregivers and family members can support all that hard work in toddlers, what are some strategies you've found um, to be effective? So like, uh, like I was saying, um, it can be frustrating if they're trying to be independent or not. Uh, are there other areas that uh, you find are helpful um, in dealing with that frustration? Well, I think knowing your child is just really key because everybody has, you know, their biological times where they're more tired, more hungry, mm -hmm. more apt to be crabby, mm -hmm. you know, so, so that, is, that is huge. Um, you know, and also just setting up so that they are given, the children are giving choices mm -hmm. and, and appreciating how much is embedded in the everyday routine. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that there are opportunities for all kinds of things with throughout mm -hmm. the day, you know, outside time, um, you know, indoor story time, uh, exercise opportunities, mm -hmm. you know, so that they have a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. for practicing skills. Uh -huh. So a variety mm -hmm. of things to do and yeah. sort of meeting, again, that spectrum of activities that they right. might want. So you talked about uh, choices. That was an interesting. Um, Mary and I talked about that a little bit. Some people might think you don't want to give your kid too many choices because who knows what they're going to do. Right. Uh, but it's important to help them. That's sort of a skill to develop. So uh, how do you approach I, giving say, toddler choices? I'd say limited choices. Okay. You know, for example, um, they sometimes are just looking for a way to say, I'm at a distance from you. I'm, I'm becoming my own person. So I am going to decide what I'm going to wear. So you say, do you want this one or this one? You give them two, mm -hmm. two outfits. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, that depends on the age of the child. And you know, it, it changes as a child it, you know, gets different mm -hmm. uh, through different stages. But you know, offering some options. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, and one day they may totally reject eating spinach and the next day <laughs> you put it on their plate just you know not not saying oh you're never going to like spinach just you know like just give them the choice again they might you know it's just it's oh. part of it is the yeah <laughs> that's a great point to think about um, since they are so busy do, mm -hmm. and working hard they right. aren't even necessarily able to tell like their mood on any given day exactly. doesn't mean that you shouldn't keep offering right. the option right it's like you can't decide oh my kid doesn't like spinach it's like try it again <laughs> yeah. without forcing it <laughs> yeah actually actually i read somewhere that you should try things 16 times you keep keep introducing some of the foods that they don't wow. like so they get used to it oh wow i know <laughs> that is a very helpful yeah. tip that's a lot of times it's a lot of times yeah that's amazing yeah um one of the things I think that happens is like knowing how to stay close to uh, sort of supporting them but letting them go far is it can get a little risky maybe sort yes. of thinking about what are some of the things parents and family members might want to think about as they let their toddler explore some independence but uh, also keeping them safe. Yeah, I think, I think just being really aware of what a hazard, hazardous world it is for them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we've been very aware that um, you have to have a hand, you know, an arm's length away, um, you know, for certain activities. You mm -hmm. have to be really ready to catch them if they fall. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to, you know, keep them safe from the road. They could, um, you know, choke. Mm -hmm. They could, you know, get into um, outlets on the, they, I mean, they're just, we all know how many things there right. are. There are poisons. Everything has to be above their reach. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's a pretty hazardous world. Mm -hmm. You know, they can drown in a bucket of water. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to be supervised. They mm -hmm. have to have a very, very intense supervision. So again, sort of you mentioned earlier, preparing the environment. Mm -hmm. So as your child sort of starts to explore, making sure that these things are not uh, as, as available to them right. to get into, that they can, you know, they're not sitting in there. Right. on the blanket anymore, looking at you nicely. They're actually <laughs> going to head over to the bottom of the kitchen sink. And some of the right. Child, yeah, right. And some of them are just, you know, a, a parent today told me of, about a, a child that had managed to get his ride-on toy on top of a table. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe there's some things you can't even predict. You then. can't predict. You know, you think you have the safest house around, and uh -huh. they'll, they'll get into things. So. so again, that importance of staying close, being observant, but giving them some room to keep mm -hmm. growing. Right. Good. Good. We are going to take a very short break and have a, a, uh, a word from Let's Grow Kids, um, and then we will be back to talk about more toddlerhood topics. For the youngest among us, 
Actually, time is more than just fun. It's learning and development. When we stimulate a child's curiosity and natural desire to connect with others, we help them develop the important skills needed for school, relationships, and life. Join Let's Grow Kids to help all of our children reach their full potential. Learning starts day one. Welcome back. We are here talking with Susan Heimer about uh, toddlers and how much energy and how much fun they have in the world and how we have to keep a close eye on them too. So um, welcome back. And Susan, we talked a lot about how toddlers are moving around and walking and getting into things and you meant the ride on toy on top of a table. <laughs> uh, the other thing that is happening um, when toddlers as in this time of life is they're developing language. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, there's probably, again, a lot of variety in that. What are some milestones of language development around toddler, around this, this point in their lives? Well, almost all of the very youngest children have been listening to language since they, before they were born. Uh -huh. So they have a sense. My um, uh, older, younger son was adopted from China, and he had been listening to Chinese, you know, uh -huh. until he was 18 months old. Mm -hmm. Um, so children have a real understanding that we call receptive language of what they are hearing. Mm -hmm. um, generally, not uh -huh. always, right. but um, generally they understand a lot. Um, toddlers are beginning to understand words and especially if you make it simple, mm -hmm. you know, they will be using words and a lot of times we pair it with gestures like more and please, mm -hmm. finished, drink, Mm -hmm. you know, lots of things like that that mm -hmm. are really, um, you know, very helpful because pairing it uses a different part of the brain. And so that's reinforcing, mm -hmm. you know, the words that you want them to, to be using. And the more language they have, the less frustrated they are. Uh -huh. So it's really a powerful, powerful mm -hmm. thing to be learning language. Mm -hmm. um, we expect probably by the age of two to have at least 50 words. And if they're not... Um, a lot of families would be referred to CIS and, you know, do screening and just kind of see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, they'll not be hearing everything if they've had recurrent ear infections mm -hmm. or, um, you know, there, there are lots of reasons where, you know, language is delayed. Um, but generally, a child, a child will be, you know, picking up some words. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they start out with just simple words for objects. Mm -hmm you know, and then have some action words ending, um, you know, sort of simple two word sentences. Okay. And then they'll go on to, to more. Put more together. To more. So when you say, uh, you said receptive language, so mm -hmm. that children can understand more than they can say, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of how much to say. So sometimes I think people will say, get away from the stove the hot stove and it's going to you know get you burned uh -huh. um, that's a long sentence it's and you lot. just said right and a lot of that that's adult talk goes over their heads okay so if you keep it more simple mm -hmm. if you say um hot or um in, in the case of a stove i would say no we try not to say no a lot because mm -hmm. we save that for safety issues mostly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but i would say um hot um, and then they, they need some little self-talk. Do not touch the stove. No touching stove. Uh -huh. You know, something that's just a little thing um, that they will internalize that thought and be able to kind of think of it, you know, when they hear it later on. Uh -huh. So um, try, try to make it simple because it's kind of what you think about what the child would say themselves, uh -huh. you know. So you're ex giving them the words that they will internalize yes. as a script, almost yes. like thinking of it that way, right. um, that that will help them develop right. that language around that. Yeah. Great. <laughs> um, what, in terms of, you said 50 words-ish yes. by age two. Uh -huh. um, and if, what are, are there, and uh, in terms of what kind of words they're saying, that you said they start with objects? Object words, baby, mama, uh -huh. ball, bird, Okay. You know, things that they see, things, uh -huh. familiar things. Uh -huh. They um, will be giving you the words. And, and my son, again, going back to that, you know, he could say some of the simple Chinese words. Uh -huh. 
But then he was surrounded by English, and it was just amazing because for an adult to pick up language, we have like pruned a lot of those neural connections in our brains mm -hmm. because we haven't needed them. Mm -hmm. So it's harder for us to learn a foreign language mm -hmm. as we get older. Mm -hmm. You know, language is just a prime. The birth to three time mm -hmm. is the prime time for a language acquisition. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, he picked up English just mm -hmm. amazingly fast. Mm -hmm. Uh, with some help from CIS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think it's um, just, to, again, that variation of development is important to remember. Right. So just knowing that people, and we, you've said it several times, your child is its, its own self and mm -hmm. will develop at its own rate. And you want to know about typical development and what you might expect mm -hmm. um, and to sort of get help when needed or get some advice, but not to necessarily think something's wrong if they're not right. saying 50 words. You know, don't well, start counting the well, words. Well, the thing is, is that there's so much rich communication going on, hmm. even without, there'll be a child pointing, pulling a, uh, this is my, my uh, younger daughter, pulling a, a teacher's hand and mm -hmm. pointing and totally letting us know mm -hmm. what we wanted. So, that is a great point. So communicate, it's, you know, it, that language that happens in all sorts of ways. It happens in uh, all sorts of ways. Our communication right. does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things um, that, and Mary and I talked a little bit about this too, narrating the world around us. So could you talk a little bit about well, how you support? Sometimes you feel as though you're talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and you but might it's, be. <laughs> but it's really, it's really fun. Uh, and, and if you hear what the child, and you're listening to the child, a uh, child will be out in the field you know, looking at, at what there is to see and say, moo, mm -hmm. you know, like see the cow. And that's what you say. Uh -huh. Wow, I, I, I see the cow, mm -hmm. she has a calf. Mm -hmm. You know, and you just are kind of building uh -huh. on what the child has seen. And you, and that way you're acknowledging mm -hmm. that you understand, you know, what they have just pointed to, mm -hmm. you know, or if they've just pointed to something, mm -hmm. you know, they don't even have to say it. You know, you're giving them the words for it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and just having that narration means they're, they're hearing um, and, and just picking up language. And I, I have a few stories around that. I've had oh, great. children, yeah. you know, come home and, and tell their parents using words that the parents haven't used in front of them. <laughs> tell us a story. <laughs> well, one of them was I had a child who, who came home with the word diarrhea. <laughs> That's a pretty thought big word. Thought it was, a thought it was a, a great word, and, and, and it was using it appropriately. <laughs> so um, remembering that your, your toddler is a sponge and a picking sponge, up on a lot. Yeah. So that adult that you mentioned uh, earlier, adult talk, and how sort of talking over kids. Right. I, I never said to that child, you have diarrhea. Uh -huh. you know, but I did to, <laughs> tell the other teacher. Uh -huh. So anyway, um, but it's that kind of thing. We um, will be out for a walk and pointing out you know, everything. We, mm -hmm. That's one of the big things. We, toddlers love walks. It's mm -hmm. one of their favorite things, mm -hmm. uh, pointing out what we see. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they'll be picking up. Um, I had a child that was, you know, told um, yellow flower when we were just pointing it out. But, of course, we were, the adults were saying, oh, boy, the forsythia is beautiful. Uh -huh. You know, and, and the next time they went, it's forsythia. Uh -huh. You know, the child has picked up on, you know, what I didn't intend. Uh -huh. um, it's not that I wouldn't intend, but just, you know. They, right. they get this, a lot of times they go beyond and they are listening and picking up stuff. Yeah. So. Which is an uh, important thing to remember when you, you know, when you talk about setting the environment and sort of creating yeah. the environment, being conscious that uh, they're picking up a lot more than you intend. And, you know, we talked uh, and maybe a couple episodes ago about attunement and you mentioned it too, that they'll pick up on your affect um, and it's, it's like they keep doing that, but it sort of expands to language or right. to other things. So keeping that in mind is important. It is, yeah, especially when you're around kind of rude language. You just try to limit uh -huh. that around children, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we can support children so much by uh, using language. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that um, our center did was a study of the tools of the mind, mm -hmm. the um, Vygotsky's um, learning how to scaffold so that children are learning from the adult. And um, it, it's huge, you know, the self-talk that I just spoke mm -hmm. about. And also, you know, just to have them um, understand symbolic s substitutions where you're starting to play with something and you can pretend that something is something else. Uh -huh. So that is leading to a more uh, advanced kind of play. Uh -huh. You know, a, a, a dad that's using a little block mm -hmm. and pretending it's a car, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the child can pick up on that. Uh, and how, when does that happen, sort of that, being able to understand that this isn't really a car, 
it's a block. It's but just I can starting. And, it's and just starting. Being a lot of times okay. with a very young toddler, you'll be picking up the the teddy bear and pretending to feed it. Mm -hmm. You know, the the dramatic play is just is just a very beginning stage, mm -hmm. but they're starting to get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you have some props. That yes, you I, I did bring some you. props. Do you, are there any? Tell us about what you brought okay, and why, I brought, why I you brought think they're some great. Of, some of the favorite toys of, of toddlers here, of course, is a ball. Um, a ball, any any object that moves is of interest to a toddler. Mm -hmm. They really are, um, you know, so drawn, and especially if you have an adult making it move. Uh -huh. So um, it's not as interesting. If a ball is just sitting there on the floor and, and another child is not using it, an adult is not interested in it, a lot of times they won't pay attention to uh -huh. it. But if, it, if it's animated, that becomes just a, a wonderful um, thing. And, and with uh, going back to the scaffolding, one of the things you can do is um, take turns mm -hmm. with a ball mm -hmm. and say so. Mm -hmm. And that is also helping a child with you know, um, self um, behavioral stuff, uh -huh. you know, that they learn how to... So that's self-regulation. Self-regulation, exactly. The social-emotional right. development part. Right. Like, it's your turn. It's my turn. Right. Mm -hmm. Another thing about toddlers is they love... You don't have to buy expensive toys. They love just ordinary... <laughs> Pots and pans. Yeah. They can make music. They can pretend to cook. Uh-huh. Um, this might be used in the art corner for, you know, drawing or... You know, uh -huh. we're just we're just beginning to learn about you know um, using certain materials, but the, they'll learn they'll just get such joy out of some very simple mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And again, they love being helpers. And um, toddlers are fun, and they just they just have an interest in doing what you're doing. Uh -huh. So if you can give them some real uh -huh. jobs, help help me sweep, uh -huh. help me wipe the table. Uh -huh. You know, they they really do um, want to be a part of the family, uh -huh. part of everything and and so um that's that's one of my props <clears throat> that's so great too because i think it um you know supports it, that it's learning it's sort of you know finding something i think we don't always think of children as competent or, uh -huh. or they're, they're a little kid they can't help but they actually it might not be the sweeping job you would have done right. but um it's really supporting. and the competency changes i mean that's the other thing about this age range it, it might be mm. one time that they just pick it up and all they do is bam with it uh -huh. next time they've seen you use it you know, they might not have any idea, you know, the dingle hopper effect, you know, <laughs> you know but, but now they know that it's for mm -hmm. getting the crumbs, mm -hmm. you know, so they, mm -hmm. they're, just, they're just amazing that uh -huh. way. So um, I wanted to mention books. One of the best things that I always recommend is if you can find time um, to sit down every day with, with books. Uh -huh. And I love Mother Goose. Mm. Mother Goose is the, the language of all English-speaking children. It, it teaches you know, so many things in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the rhyming, vocabulary. Um, but one of the really good things about it is that um, people often know the songs, the mm. little songs in there. Mm -hmm. um, and you can have Grandma, Uncle Jack, all kinds of people will mm -hmm. start singing with you, you know, if, uh -huh. you, if, you, if you have some, you know, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star and, yeah. and all of the... And here's song storybooks. The, the toddlers in my classroom loved song storybooks. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and music, playing music, <laughs> dancing, they're using their bodies, mm -hmm. you know, and it's also using different parts of your brain. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's almost mathematical to learn rhythm and everything. Right. And it's just, this is the time to really do it. Uh -huh. I like using a large genre of, of music. Mm -hmm. And so I often play that in the morning. And, and, and another story from one of my kids was, I, I do this, you know, narration, self-talk sometimes, and, mm -hmm. and just kind of, just to talk. And I, one morning I, um, well, I had, I had been in the habit of saying, shall we put on this or that? And one morning I had one of the kids tell me what to put on. It's like, <laughs> okay. You've been, you've been listening. They were listening. That's great. So Good. Uh, we Nathan, have one more, what time for one more thing? Okay. Yeah. Well, What's your, we have it's to... too hard. It's too hard. Okay. I'll just show them all at once. I've got okay. pull toys and dolls. Sand is the mm -hmm. ideal, you know, sensory thing. I didn't talk about sensory. Sensory is huge for Excellent. toddlers. Great. Blocks. Bubbles, very simple puzzles. And when I, you know, just to observe, it doesn't have to be expensive. They have lots of right. fancy toys out there, but you can take walks, you can narrate the world, you can play with simple right. things, and you will make a toddler happy. That's right. <laughs> Great, wonderful. Okay. Well, Susan, thank you so much. Okay. It's been a, a pleasure talking with you. I know there's a lot more to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I feel um, as though I haven't scratched <laughs> the surface. Until next time. Okay. So, um, great, thank you. Okay.